мы строим 3D аватар по одной фотографии. Wow. AI is more promising than AR. We designed them to look more or less like a regular pair of eyewear. Simulation and training, so those are the areas that we believe mixed reality and virtual will change the world. Привет, друзья! Меня зовут Виктория Бородина, и я нахожусь в Кремниевой долине. Позади меня AWE. Сегодня мы будем исследовать дополненную и виртуальную реальность. Там уже нас ждет очень много разных интересных девайсов, приложений, продуктов. Поэтому пойдемте скорее посмотрим, что там для нас подготовили. Я уже вижу, что здесь полно народа, и мы можем сейчас же посмотреть, что это за очки дополненной реальности. Здесь столько людей вокруг них, я уверена, что что-то интересное. Давайте посмотрим. I'm Tian Yu Li from Unreal. So we are making AR glasses, and compared to other other platforms, uh, we are making the AR glasses that's ready to wear, compact and light. So we are talking in a consumer version, and you can see over here people are experiencing our products. For the very, very one, there are six demos here to show in the visual experience, and the one over there is actually showing our in the actions. And if you go there, you can try out glasses and see what's what's it like for for mixed reality. Wow. Okay. That's nice. How do you think? What are the biggest challenges in uh, AR right now? So I think uh, I think the level of comfort to put on the AR glasses could be the uh, biggest challenge, mm -hmm. because uh, people want to put something like more comfortable. They don't want to big uh, wear like a big bulky uh, devices when they go outside. And also it could be the content and and also the price could be also the challenge for mm -hmm. consumers to adopt such technology. Yeah, that's nice. Put your clothes to it. Wow! So the, this shows our visual and optical technology, and you can hear the sound from the both sides. Mm -hmm. So it provides you the uh, immersive experience. And the mm -hmm. best part is, even if it's immersive, you can still see my hands, right? Yeah. So even though the, the, all the immersive doesn't block you from the virtual, from the real world, and yeah. that's what we're doing for the augmented reality. And later, when you go there, you can put on the glasses to interact the digital contents in the real oh. world. So this one only shows the visual experience. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Ну что, я вижу, я просто как в кинотеатре нахожусь, и я вижу поверх людей какие-то войны, не знаю, компьютерных разумов, но это очень круто, как будто передо мной большой телевизор, и в то же время немножко появляется ощущение, что я в другом мире, и я часть, вот не знаю, аватар сейчас был. В общем, очень прикольное ощущение, мне нравится. Hi, um, so we're Rocket, um, and we're doing a couple of things here today at AWE. So we have two stories we're focusing on. One is the mass production version release of our first generation Rocket Glass. So this is a fully standalone uh, B2B uh, enterprise um, AR near, near our display. So the whole point is that we've been focusing on a combination of AI and AR technologies and how we can couple these technologies to create a fully assisted device to help workers in the field. Uh, and then our second story is about the, the prototype version of our new device, which is called Vision. And it is more of a 2B2C focused device. So we're tra trying to target use cases where the end user is a consumer, but the, the whole experience is being provided by a larger business. So things like medical applications, things like sporting and, and events, um, and these kinds, of, these kinds of applications, like brand engagement, fan engagement kind of experiences. So, uh, we have kind of two, a couple of things that we focus on. So um, with, with our first generation product line, we have an AI SDK, which comes ready out of the box with things like um, face recognition, object recognition and classification, indoor navigation, which we optimize for via Wi-Fi, voice, uh, NLU, NLP, and, and, and gesture. And this comes loaded. It means that you can take that SDK and start building applications that use these, or you can work with us and to fully customize this as well. Мы из России, из Нижнего Новгорода, там у нас весь research and development, разработка, вот, но сама компания, она базируется здесь, в Санта-Кларе, 
вот, как бы для удобства общения с заказчиками. А мы строим 3D-аватар по одной фотографии, потому что можно просто сделать селфи и с помощью наших алгоритмов получить полноценную 3D-модель, которую можно затем интегрировать в игры, в виртуальную реальность, дополненную реальность, все, что хотите. Это сделано с помощью нейронных сетей, во-первых, то, что нейронная сеть обучена на огромное количество сканов, и теперь по одной фотографии она выдает 3D-модель, это раз. Во-вторых, чтобы потом эту 3D-модель использовать, нужны какие-нибудь игровые движки, например, Unity, Unreal Engine, это то, что тоже нужно. Круто. А можно попробовать? Да, конечно. А, все, что нужно сделать, это надо сделать одну фотографию. И то, что происходит сейчас, эта фотография, она отсылается на наш ноутбук. Там происходят все вычисления. Это занимает порядка 10 секунд. И затем модель посылается сюда. И вот то, что происходит сейчас, как раз нейронная сеть, она анализирует эту фотографию, анализирует лицо и пытается сгенерировать вот именно уникальную геометрию лица, форму всей головы, для того, чтобы получить уже финальную 3D-модель. Я прямо здесь увидим, прямо вот на телефоне все, она уже есть. И мы также генерируем блокшейпы, поэтому модель можно легко анимировать. Потому что разработчики могут просто зайти на наш сайт, получить доступ к этому SDK и иметь такую функциональность. Например, их пользователь делает фотографию и получает для себя аватар. Да, это называется Avatar SDK, то что просто заходите на сайт avatarsdk.com и там есть вся подробная информация, можно получить доступ непосредственно к SDK, то есть нужно просто зарегистрироваться и вы получаете такую функциональность, то что вот мы можете это использовать в своих собственных приложениях, то есть все это уже доступно. Vario is the only company that can do realistic shadows in mixed reality, for example. Well, we can do a lot of things for the first time in the world in a mixed reality, so anyway, Vario means a shadow. So this is the, the star of the show at Augmented World Expo, and it's the first time where you can put a headset on and you cannot anymore tell if it's real or virtual. So we can create virtual reality, mixed reality that is as real as the real life. So Vario XR1 is the world's first photorealistic mixed reality product which means that you can see all the world around you and you can add element, digital elements that are as real as real life. It is very different from optical see-through devices like HoloLens or Magic Leap, where the graphics are holographic and it's a very limited field of view. We have full field of view and the graphics are, you don't anymore know if it's real or virtual. And you can switch seamlessly between VR and AR. It's a groundbreaking product. No one has done it before. How do you think, should it be marked somewhere um, that people who can't, uh, like, see what is real, what is not, uh, understand it? Uh, that's a really good question. I think when we go into the future, uh, people will be definitely confused what is real and what is not. I think it will change the world for a better, evidently, because you don't need to produce so much plastic, for example, and you can create a lot of things that you now have to do a physical thing in the future, they can be on virtual. So I think it will save the world eventually. And I think the next generation of people will will be much more knowledgeable about this and the current generation. So maybe for the current generation there could be something to show it, but uh, I would say that in the future it will take care of itself. Okay, that's nice. Now uh, AR and VR are mostly using in uh, games, but can you please explain what other fields can use uh, uh, profes VR? Yeah, professionals like design, uh, architecture, engineering, construction, and uh, uh, simulation and training. So those are the areas that we believe Mixed reality and virtual will change the world. А сейчас мы посмотрим на эмоции людей, которые проходят через этот experience. Мы можем, кстати, посмотреть, что показывают на экранах. Hi, Marcus. Hi. What are you doing here? Uh, we, uh, yesterday we announced the first world's first mixed reality headset that is capable of doing photorealistic mixed reality. So it's called XR1 Developer Edition from uh, Vario. And uh, so we're doing that demo now together with Volvo. So Volvo, the Swedish car manufacturer, is using our headset to prototype new designs and check out new heads-up display systems in a real car. So we're actually using this headset driving in a real road with a real car, but replacing the whole interior of the car in full photorealistic fidelity. Wow. It's a video pass-through system, so it's a human eye resolution headset called VR1. It's in the base for this. 
and then now we just announced the XR add-on. So it's basically you buy it as a one headset, but you have a VR headset capable of human eye resolution that powers this, and two 12 megapixel cameras that channels uh, the feed from the real world to you, as you see it through the virtual headset. What people can use it for? Uh, you can do uh, design evaluations, design reviews, uh, flight simulators, uh, so training. And um, yeah, I mean, it's the first device that actually can represent uh, something close to hard AR, where you are not able to distinguish between the virtual objects and the real world. So this is something that is uh, our aim at Vario. I think that the video pass-through systems that we are developing now is, uh, the, this is the first time I think people see what's possible to do with a video pass-through system in high resolution. And I think uh, there will be many others doing this along the line, but uh, it's going to be hard for them to get this kind of resolution, I believe. Oh, that's cool. Can I have this experience? Sure, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll let's do it. I'll show the demo. All right, let's give it a go. So what we have here is a mixed reality headset. So we have a very high resolution VR headset with a human eye resolution eye tracker and then a very high re resolution camera input with two RGB cameras with a very low latency of less than 15 milliseconds. Yeah. So we can blend the best of both worlds, AR, VR, into one device. That's why we call it mixed reality. Sounds cool. Let's try. All right, is it comfortable? Yeah. All right. So you can see me now. Yeah, I see you. Uh, you can see latency is fairly fast. Mm -hmm. If you turn around a little bit. I see a car. Then we will build the car uh -huh. with full texture and full paintwork while you're looking at it. Uh -huh. But you're still seeing the reality at the same time. So yeah. Wow. And uh, if you want to, you can walk into the car now. Don't worry, it's not real. Oh, okay. What? It looks very real. I want to touch this car because it yeah. looks very real. Yeah, it is real. Yeah. And funny thing is, if you look at the car, and then uh, let me take off the headset while you're uh -huh. looking at the car. Look at the car. Uh -huh. This is really the spooky moment because uh, there is no car. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Но это было очень интересно, потому что такое смешение. Сначала ты видишь реальность, потом реальность и дополненную реальность, потом полностью вот эту виртуальную реальность. И машина выглядит настолько реально, что, ну, я как-то мне хотелось дверь открыть, хотя, ну, я могла просто войти. И это очень круто, реально выглядит вот, по-настоящему. Классно. This is a industrial wearable technology that clips onto a hard hat, just like this. And it's very lightweight uh, and less than a pound, uh, very comfortable. A worker can wear it all day and control a full Android tablet computer just with your voice, just like this. Why only Android? Ah, Android is an open and very config configurable platform and very secure. You can use it to pull up documents, instructions, uh, have a guided workflow of how to do a procedure. You can pull, uh, you can take pictures and video. Anything you can do with a tablet or iPhone or Android, you can do with this. It's so, amazing. Is it for constructors only? Uh, construction workers, factory workers, field services, anything you can imagine where you need your hands to do your work. Wow, that's nice. We use a micro display. Uh -huh. We use very, very rugged materials so that you could drop the device on the floor. Uh, it's got a very bright screen and very good microphones so that it cancels out all the noise around. This might be 80, 90 decibels right now, but the device can hear us perfectly. My controls, mm -hmm. flashlight, flashlight. Oh, wow, that's cool. We believe in safety first so that we can see when we're working and then pull down the technology when we need it most. So it's a fantastic way and we're on the path to a much brighter future with digital reality. Here we go. Put this on your head. Okay. Let me show you. <laughs> pull it back like that. Whoop. Okay. Now. Oh, oh, I can see so now something. Now you can see, okay, you can glance down at it. And they say, navigate home. Navigate home. 
wow. And then you say... Uh, it understands me. So <laughs> my, my controls? Um, yeah. Sorry? Say my controls. My controls. Flashlight. Uh, flashlight. Flashlight. My camera. I say, wow, take I photo. see you. Okay, take photo. I'm with Augmenteer. We make a guided uh, worker platform that delivers work instructions to uh, field service and factory workers and also provides an integrated remote expert. So if a field worker is having a difficult time on a job, they can directly connect to a, a subject matter expert. Um, I would say uh, AI is more promising than AR. I think that there are a lot of use cases for AR, primarily in training, but there are not that many use cases in manufacturing and service, not as much as everyone would have you believe. Uh, actually, we help workers keep their jobs. We make them more productive, so it makes them uh, much more valuable versus, uh, say, a robot or a poorly poor performing employee. That would be the danger of being fired is if you weren't able to perform or, or improve your productivity. So we're helpful for workers, not, not hurtful. How do you think, what is uh, the main um, trends in AR? Hmm. I think some of the social aspects of AR is interesting to me. Uh, we see a lot of, you know, this is a hardware conference, uh, in, particularly in this area, but I think that the advantages that the hard work convey to you, the ease of access, the distributedness, the connectivity that you see, you know, so we have the you know, creating avatars, we have the advent of high-speed data networks like 5G. I think that you're going to see a lot more interconnectivity, and once we reach a certain level of that, it's going to be more ubiquitous. So I think you'll see a lot more AI, AI, AR applications. So I think that there's some talk of like the, the mirror universe and the digital world. So I think that you'll see more digital elements get placed in the real world. So kind of like Pokemon Go, you know, you there would be stations and, and Pokemon out there. I think that as more people get AR glasses, they'll just be wearing them all the time and there'll be call outs all over the place for stuff that's not in the real world. I think the thing that I've been fighting, I guess, is people not quite believing in the power of AR and VR. Um, it's, it's a very strange experience to try and describe to somebody what putting on a VR headset and going into presence. So the, phys the physical manifestation of your brain saying, oh, you're in this VR environment. Because I can describe that to people and it just sounds Sounds like I'm on drugs. But once I put somebody in a headset for the first time, I see their mouth drop open and they go, oh, I get it now. Uh, and I experienced that a couple of years ago and I've just been, yes, this, this is the way the future is going to go because it's just too cool. Uh, there are many devices you like done chips for. So what's your favorite one? Uh, my favorite one is the, the one that does the job that I need done right now. Uh, I think the... If you look at the way the cell phone market evolved, I mean, 10 years ago we didn't have smartphones, and now hardly anybody uses them for calling up, they use them for a basis for applications. And I think that what you're seeing here is the essentially the beginning of the cell phone revolution, but for headsets. So I can't say now because what I want personally is I want a headset that I can wear, the glasses look cool, I have, it's constantly connected online, I can chat with my friends, I can see my email things, there's a compass up there, you know, there'd be a little call out over your head telling me your name if I forgot that, uh, so it would just be a lot of information, and I see people creating environments that they can just wear as different layers that are piled on top of there, but that's my view. But I think the coolest thing is that there, there's all these different styles here that shows people's different intention, different, taking that in different directions, so I think the, the winners are going to be interesting. So. It's going to be a fun world, but I can't predict it, but it's going to be fun. So these are Focal Smart Glasses. Uh, we call them everyday glasses, really. We design them to look more or less like a regular pair of eyewear. Yeah. The idea is that unlike a lot of other products here, you can take them out into the world. So when you're walking down the street, you have a display floating about an arm's length out in front of you. Yeah, so we have a variety of different experiences on them. Everything from text messaging, you can read and respond to text messages, calendar notifications, you call an Uber, uh, control your Spotify playlist. Basically, like the kinds of experiences we're working on are 
trying to give you access to your digital world like in a glanceable and quick manner without kind of pulling you away from everything else that's in front of you. So this is all totally custom made by us, North. Um, so there's two things. The hardware is called retinal holographic projection, which means that there's a small projector here in the right-hand side that's beaming a small laser off of a hologram that's in the lens and then bouncing that image back onto my eye. So there's no screen, there's no LCD. It's just painted onto my, onto my retina. So that's the hardware. And then the software, we've built an experience based on Android that is totally custom UI um, that floats out in front of you, that's very glanceable, very subtle, almost kind of minimalist. Uh, you want to do a demo? Yeah. OK. So each pair of focals is totally custom made for the wearer. We mm -hmm. take a, when you buy a pair of focals, we take a 3D scan of your head and use that information to build a pair that is totally custom for you. What we have here is obviously not custom, so it's going to mm -hmm. fit a little weird, mm -hmm. but maybe we can try it for you. So I want you to take a look here, and I want you to look. You see those four little lights? Yeah. I want you to guide those lights towards your eye. And then okay. look straight ahead. Do you see it there? Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to open your eyes out too much. Don't put them too far up your oh, head. Oh, okay. Do you, okay. See, you see it right there? Uh, red? Uh, I, I see it. Text, like. You see the text, yeah. Uh -huh. So you guys can see what she's seeing right here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our home page right here. If you scroll to the right, we have messages. You can click into those messages. How can I click it? Uh, so I'm Oh, oh, right okay, here. got it. No, yeah. This is called Loop. It's a four-way directional joystick that you use to control it. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to watch on this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what do you need to do? So, with it? Yeah. So this is our home page. If you scroll to the right, it takes you to messages. You can click into those messages and scroll down through them. You're mm -hmm. seeing it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you can respond like that. If you scroll to the right again, you can see what's coming up on your calendar. Mm -hmm. it looks like you had an elevator pitch meeting. Yeah. Uh, if you scroll to the right again, uh, you have your navigation. So we can look up a lo location to go or see what we have saved on here already. Mm -hmm. You look like you're concentrating really hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And that's uh, nice. And things like weather as well. So it's really just like basic, simple experiences to let you access to your digital world.